Okay, well, I'm here with Kirsty Lamont. Now, you're a director of Mozo, which is a travel insurance and other financial services comparison website. And you've been having a quite interesting time recently, or the travel insurers have, uh, Kirsty, with natural disasters really threatening travel plans. And um, it seems to me that there have been a lot of things happening in the world over the last 12 months or so, not least of all, the recent earthquake in Nepal, which... Absolutely. Um, no doubt, you know, it's left a lot of people stranded and in difficulty. And obviously, very sadly, um, people have been killed in Nepal as well, but also changing many people's travels plans and how that impacts on uh, travel insurance. So why don't you take us through some of the scenarios that have developed over the last uh, few weeks, particularly in relation to Nepal and also in relation to uh, natural disasters uh, generally? Sure. Well, uh, you're right. I mean, occasionally circumstances can wreak absolute havoc on our travel plans. And this is where travel insurance is really vital to ensure that you aren't out of pocket from things like trip cancellations, delays, becoming stranded abroad, you know, even evacuation or repatriation due to natural disasters. But there are a lot of trips and trucks involved in uh, travel insurance when it comes to coverage for natural disasters. So let's walk through some of those instances so that we can get a view as to when we might be covered and when we might not be. I think the most important thing is that travel insurance only covers you against unexpected natural disasters or catastrophes. And the important okay. word here is unexpected. So if you knowingly go into a dangerous area, you may not be covered. So does that mean if, the, so, if there's a travel advisory about that particular area, which says it's dangerous or something has happened or a you know, political scenario has happened, it's possible you might not be covered? Well, that's right. If you've purchased your travel insurance policy after a government travel warning has been issued or after the media has reported there might be you know, some sort of issue happening, and you decide to go ahead and travel to that area, your insurer will more than likely refuse to cover you because you've decided to travel at your own peril. When it comes to things like the Nepal earthquake, you know, if you've been stranded in Nepal due to, you know, a natural catastrophe that was unforeseen, that, that wasn't predicted or advised against, in that situation, that's where travel insurance will cover you. Uh, for everything from things like delays, uh, medical care, becoming stranded, evacuation and even repatriation. Mm. Okay, so tell me, in, in terms of Nepal, have the travel insurers um, actually had to uh, repatriate a lot of people and, and, and cover medicals and stuff like that? Do you know of, of circumstances in, in relation to that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of travel insurers have medical teams who will try and work on the ground to provide assistance to victims and try to repatriate them home again. Uh, and so it's been a very busy time, obviously, for travel insurers. Um, but the most important thing is that those people who are you know, affected over there are being given assistance um, and helped home as quickly as possible. So the key to this is um, you've got to check with um, the, um, what's it called, Safe Traveller, okay, which is the, the Australian website. That's what it's called, is it? Yeah, that's right. Smart Traveller. Smart Traveller. Government website that will issue travel advisory warnings uh, yeah. with relation to things like natural disasters, civil unrest and that sort of thing. And so it's really important to check those warnings before you go. And the other important thing, obviously, is, you know, this is another reason why it's really, really important to purchase your travel insurance as soon as you've paid for your trip. You know, a lot of us will uh, purchase our trip months ahead and then leave travel insurance as a last minute afterthought. Obviously, the earlier you purchase it, you know, the more uh, you'll be covered for things like cancellations um, in case of things like uh, natural disasters or, or other issues that might arise and affect your travel plans. So, for example, if you've bought your travel plans to go to a location and let's say that unfortunately there's a, a natural disaster or a political issue comes up or there's a, a riot or a coup or whatever, clearly if you haven't bought your travel insurance then you're not covered for the cancellation on that policy. That's right. So that's why it always makes sense to buy your travel insurance early and not at the last minute. Uh, Kirsty, I also noticed recently that you issued a media release about pre-existing conditions and um, people getting last-minute travel insurance. What's, what's happening there? Yeah, look, this is one of the really misunderstood areas of travel insurance. Uh, most insurers will have a list of pre-existing conditions that they do cover and a list of ones that they don't. 
Sometimes these can vary from insurer to insurer. So it's really important that when you are getting your travel insurance quotes, that you check the list to see if your condition is on the list of ones that they will cover. Mm. If it is on the list of ones that they will cover, you need to make sure that you have flagged that you have the condition at the time that you are booking your insurance. Because if you haven't flagged it, even though they cover the condition, you won't be covered if you haven't mentioned it when you book your insurance. And, and sometimes the pre-existing conditions can take a little while to sort out, can't they? Because they need to get, you know, letters from doctors to say whether the pre-existing conditions under control and things like that. Yeah, look, it really depends on the insurer and what your condition is. I mean, if you've got something like a heart problem that, you know, has been stable for a number of years and you've got medication to keep it under control, that sort of thing may be covered, but you may require extra evidence in the form of a letter from your doctor to show that it is under control. Um, alternatively, there may be some insurers who will just refuse to cover that outright. So again, it really is one of those areas that you need to look into. And once you've sort of done your your insurer comparison and decided on the best value insurer for you, you know, give them a call and make sure that you know exactly where you stand before you book the insurance. So the message on all these uh, natural disasters and pre-existing conditions is as soon as you book your trip, um, get your travel insurance. I think in the case of pre-existing conditions, maybe even check it out before you book your trip in case that uh, you can't get cover. And so get it well in advance and make sure that you can uh, that you buy the best policy you can afford to ensure that you're fully covered. That's right. You know, don't treat travel insurance as an afterthought because it's too important. And when things go wrong, the last thing you want is to have financial hassles. Um, and other emergencies that you can't get sorted out. So book it early and know that you've got the peace of mind and the cover. Yeah, or as I describe it, lying on a bed in a third world hospital is not the time to start thinking about travel insurance. <laughs> Absolutely. Kirsty Lamont, thank you for your time today. Thanks, John.